Hello and welcome to Music Radar's video guide to Soundation. Over the next 15 minutes, we'll show you the basics of this fast and fun online door, put together the core elements of a track, and upload the results for all the world to hear. To get started with Soundation, browse to soundation.com in Chrome or any Flash-enabled browser and sign up for a free or paid account. The differences between the accounts are explained on the Select Your Account Type page, but most of what we're about to show you can be done in the free version. We'll let you know when we do anything requiring a paid account. With your account created, mouse over Studio in the top bar and launch either the Flash or native Google Chrome version of Soundation Studio. We're using Chrome Studio as it makes hooking up a MIDI keyboard easier, boasts lower latency and includes three new effects that aren't in the Flash version yet. Soundation launches with a blank project and here we're loading one we've already started working on. On the left is the track list, containing a stack of grey audio and blue virtual instrument tracks, each with its own volume, pan, solo, mute, FX and automation controls. In the centre of the interface is the arrangement area, where samples and MIDI clips are laid out as songs and automation is drawn in. Right hand side is the sampler MIDI browser comprising three tab pages. Library contains the free samples and MIDI clips. Premium Sounds houses the extra samples that come with the paid versions. And Project brings together all the samples used in the current project. Top of the interface are Soundation's various ancillary menus, including the very useful Help menu. And four clip editing tools. And at the bottom of the transport bar, the horizontal and vertical zoom tools. buttons for hiding and revealing the browser and on-screen MIDI keyboard activating external MIDI input and publishing the current project let's make a quick track selecting new song from the file menu closes the current project and starts a fresh one First thing to do is decide on a project tempo. We're going for a house feel, so we double click the tempo field and enter 125 BPM. We want playback to loop around the first eight bars while we work on our track, so we set the cycle range by dragging the yellow bar on the timeline to cover eight bars and turn on cycle mode with the rightmost button in the transport. To add a new audio track, click the plus button at the bottom of the column. In the library tab of the browser, unfold the electronica and 125 folders to reveal a list of electronic loops at 125 BPM. Checking auto audition at the bottom of the browser lets us hear each sample as it's selected. Having chosen a loop, simply drag it from the browser to the Arrange page to have it appear as a clip laid out along the timeline, and press play in the transport to start playback. Here's perkrevclick.wav, which is a complex process percussion loop. We don't actually want to use the whole thing, just the third bar. To chop that section out, we can either drag the bottom left and right corners inwards to do away with the rest of the loop,
or select the scissors tool from the top left tools palette, click at the start and end of the third bar, then switch back to the pointer tool, select the newly separated unwanted sections and press backspace to delete them. Now drag the one bar percussion loop to the start of bar 1, then drag its top right corner out to repeat it all the way to the start of bar 9. Let's add some drums. Shorten the playback loop to just the first bar and click the plus musical notes button to add a new virtual instrument track. The top menu in the track header contains Soundation's versatile collection of virtual synths, samplers and drum machines. For our drums we could load up Drum Machine and choose one of four classic Roland TR emulations, but instead we go for the SPC which offers a more varied and expandable range of sampled kits. Choose Electro House from the preset menu at the top right and click the pads to audition the sounds. Being a MIDI instrument we need to enter some note data to trigger the SPC. Double clicking at the start of the track creates a MIDI clip and opens the piano roll editor. The SPC's 8 sounds are arranged up the keyboard from note C3 to G3. Select the pencil tool at the top left of the piano roll and draw in a C3 kick drum hit on every beat. The velocities, i.e. volume, of individual or multiple hits can be adjusted by selecting the velocity tool and dragging up and down on them. Red is maximum velocity, green is minimum. Follow the kick with C sharp notes on beats 2 and 4 for a snare and an E on beat 4 for a hand clap. Lastly, a D note halfway between each beat defines an offbeat hi hat pattern. With our one bar pattern complete, extend the playback loop to 8 bars again and drag the top right corner of the MIDI clip out to repeat it up to bar 9. Each of the SPC's sounds can be edited using the envelope controls in the waveform display. and the gain, pan and pitch controls. The output of the instrument as a whole can be beat up with the punch and bite knobs and distorted heavily with the MSL dial. That's our drums and percussion sorted, so now let's record a bass line. Create another virtual instrument track and load it up with the WUB machine. There are two ways to trigger and record a virtual instrument in real time. The first is to open Soundation's virtual MIDI keyboard and play it via the keys on your QWERTY keyboard. The second is to activate the MIDI button, which routes the output of an attached MIDI keyboard to the instrument track. We're going for the latter. hit record and play an 8 bar part on our MIDI keyboard, triggering the synth. Inevitably some of the notes are a bit out of time, but by selecting all of them in the piano roll and choosing 1 8 from the quantize menu, they're all automatically snapped to the nearest 8th note, putting the whole thing perfectly in time. The wub machine's LFO is key to bringing movement to its sounds, and by twisting the speed control the rate at which it wobbles is raised and lowered. Soundation's automation system enables you to program automatic movement of any and all instrument and effect parameters, so let's use it to program in a series of speed knob movements. From the wub machine tracks automate menu, select the wub machine LFO speed. An automation line appears on the track, the height of which at any given point sets the value of the target parameter, LFO speed in this case. Clicking the line creates a node at that point which can be dragged around to shape the progression of the line. With the 
track playing, enter and edit nodes to create an interesting performance with the speed knob, which you'll see moving in real time in the Wub Machine interface. The last part of our loop is a plucky synth riff generated by the simple instrument. The sound isn't terribly exciting as it is, so let's put distortion and delay effects on it to polish it up. Clicking the FX button in the track header reveals a plus button. Clicking this reveals Soundation's effects list, which includes everything from compression and reverb to filtering and auto-tuning. Selecting distortion and switching the effect to the foldback setting immediately injects life into the part. Clicking the plus again, we insert a delay effect after the distortion. Playing with the delay's controls soon gets us a lead sound befitting the rest of the track. Clicking the S for solo button in the track header lets us hear it in isolation. Finally, we also apply an EQ effect to the percussion track, reducing its low frequency content in order to stop it clashing with the bass line and kick drum. With our loop finished, we can publish it online for anyone in the Soundation community to hear. Simply select Publish Track from the File menu, and in the dialog that appears, give the track a name and click Edit Track Info to enter a description, add a picture and more. track can now be found and listened to in the community section of the Soundation website. That's the basics covered then, but there's plenty more to Soundation. Here are a few of the other cool things it can do. Subscribers to any paid Soundation account get the ability to record real instruments or any other sound routed through their computer directly into Soundation. The process is the same as with MIDI tracks. Select the audio track you want to record to, hit the record button in the transport and play your instrument. When the recording is finished, the resulting audio clip appears on the track for editing and arranging just like any other. Paying account holders can also import audio from their hard disk into Soundation by dragging it from Windows Explorer or OS X Finder into the My Files folder in the Library tab of the browser. Once imported, your audio can be dragged into a project and handled in the usual way.
two tools we've not yet covered at the top of the Soundation interface are called Stretch and Pitch. With either selected, you can time stretch any audio or MIDI clip by dragging its bottom right hand corner left to speed it up, or right to slow it down. MIDI clips it makes no difference which tool is selected, but with audio clips stretch applies time stretch with no change in pitch, while pitch pitch shifts the audio up or down as well as changing its playback speed. Here are both styles of time stretch being applied to our percussion loop. Here we're slowing down a 130 BPM loop to fit our 125 BPM track. Soundation enables collaborative music making via Google Hangouts. Click Start a Hangout on the Soundation front page and invite up to eight Google Plus contacts into your session. Everyone can record audio and MIDI into the project, edit the results and get involved in the arrangement, complete with Google Hangouts usual voice and video feeds. So that wraps up Music Radar's quick guide to Soundation. It's intuitive, fast and fun, loaded with great sounds, instruments and effects and a fantastic way to collaborate online. Head to Soundation.com now and give it a try.